ladies and gentlemen, Czechoslovakia, Ron Daniels! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to start the evening with a little bit of a confession. It's going to come as a shock, so do brace yourself. <laughs> I've not said it yet, but <laughs> I'm gay. No way. Okay, maybe not that shocking, okay, I suppose I am quite feminine. I've always been quite feminine. Um, I was the most feminine at school, so I had to play Mary in the school nativity. <laughs> it wasn't even an all-boys school. <laughs> um, I never really thought I had a gay guy's voice, because I usually get called Madam on the phone. It's by everyone, including my banks. I've been through the security questions. I know my name's Mark, and they're shooting with Madam Mark, which is lovely of them. Um, I hate being on the phone anyway, especially to people like Banks. Um, the thing I really hate is the phonetic alphabet. Can anybody here, does anybody here know the phonetic alphabet? Yep. Yeah. Okay, for the joke to work, you're supposed to not know it. So, does anybody here know the phonetic alphabet? No! Exactly. Nobody knows it, right? Um, <laughs> The thing is, bank, I feel like the bank people, they're sort of smug. They're really happy that they know it. They know that you don't know it. It's not helping you out. They don't even warn you it's coming. They don't sort of go, you know, um, I can't even think of one. C for Charlie. They just go, Charlie. It's like, why did this person just say Charlie to me? Just in the middle of the sentence, Charlie. Like, huh? I was on the phone the other day. I was booking a cab, and where I work, the postcode is WC2H. Out of nowhere, he just went, Whiskey Charlie 2 Hotel. <laughs> Whiskey Charlie 2 Hotel sounds like an average night out of Nigella Lawson to me. <laughs> um, I, I really hate Nigella Lawson. I've always had a real passionate hate for Nigella Lawson. And the reason is because she sort of fools you into thinking what she's doing is really easy when it's really, really not very easy. It's always um, very simple, all ingredients that you can find in your larder and in your deep freeze. <laughs> Two problems already, Nigella. <laughs> But the other day I actually believed her. She said she was going to make um, tropically infused haricot salsa on sourdough. Okay, sounds very nice, but it's all very easy. So I'm following her and she says, if you haven't got something, you can swap it out. So if you haven't got the sourdough, you can swap it in for normal bread. If you haven't got um, the living Coke, a nut. Um, a living Coke, a nut for the tropically infused, then you can leave it out. Uh, but the time you've sort of swapped everything out, you've made two different meals. So she's made tropically infused um, salsa on sourdough, and I've made beans on toast. <laughs> Um, but I wasn't going to talk about Nigella today, so I got a bit uh, sidetracked there. Um, I was going to talk about being gay, some of the things that are just a bit different about being gay and being straight. And I think the absolute worst thing about being gay is going to the STD clinic. I know you straight people love it. Um, no, but it is worse for us, it's worse for us, honestly. You know, you sort of sit down, the first thing you get is like a little questionnaire of, of recent activity. Um, and you get to about question number three, are you gay? You say yes, sort of on a little, um, a little clipboard, you know. They sort of slyly slip away the little clipboard and bring out a massive fuck off flip chart. <laughs> Things like, have you had um, protected oral sex in the last three years? Protected oral sex? Who has protected oral sex? <laughs> Sucking a condom, basically. They're so obsessed with protection. It's like, have you touched another man's nipple in the last six years? Yes. Was it protected? <laughs> yeah. um, and they're so concerned about STDs amongst the gay community that they're giving out, when like kids and, and people, when they come out as being gay, they give out sort of little kits of like, you know, little pamphlets and things like that. So it's these little kits of, of um, things to protect you from STDs. And for gay people, they're giving out full body condoms <laughs> so that you're fully protected. So gay sex is just two men lying next to each other in rubber, basically. Um, I was thinking it's going to be a bit embarrassing for that Aston Villa footballer if he takes the wrong kit to training, though, isn't it? <laughs> um, something else that's sort of uh, very different, I think, when you're gay, I think somehow it feels a little bit less relevant, is, is pop music. Um, I remember when I was at school, um, Craig David released Fill Me In. And all the other boys, they wanted to be Craig David. I wanted Craig David to film me. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anybody here follow Craig David on Instagram at all? No, well, in case of this exact emergency, I keep some evidence on me, actually, uh, of, of Craig David's Instagram. Um, I have to tell you that nothing I say in these five minutes will be funnier than five minutes, minutes spent on Craig David's Instagram, so it's been a waste of an evening, people, I'm afraid, but this is what Craig David now looks like. Oh yeah, can you see that at the back? That's what Craig David now looks like. How did this happen, eh? 
I know they say that um, sex is the best form of exercise, but he was only doing it Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> this is not the sight of a man that's chilling on Sundays. That is just... um, I have to say, I'm not that successful in, in, in love, to be honest with you, and uh, I... Uh, Last time I spent some time on Craig Dover's Instagram, I thought this was the most sex I've had in ages. <laughs> it's mostly pictures like that. And um, I thought the worst thing is the next time I go to the STD clinic, not only have I got to tell them I'm gay, but I've got to tell, got to tell them I've been looking at Craig David on Instagram and without protection. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got. Thank you, guys. Thank you.